you are here to prove that Mr. Birch is the biological father of your 23-month-old son, Unai. You state that you have had a romantic relationship with Mr. Birch since 2009, and his paternity denial makes you furious. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Birch, you claim that Ms. Cochran and you never had a relationship and were only friends with benefits. Uh, you say that you were not having sex with her during the window of conception and are here to prove you are not the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Cochran, a seven-year relationship and he's denying your baby? Why? Your Honor, he's denying my son because he doesn't want the responsibility of another child, nor does Mr. Birch want to pay child support. Mm -hmm. That's why I believe he's denying our child. Your Honor, we only had a, a friends with benefits since we first started. And I made it clear to her. I made it clear to her that's what I wanted from the beginning. I understand that Mr. Birch only wanted friends with benefits and I was fine with that. And I understood that Mr. Birch did not want any more children and I was fine with that. But it is said and done now. I'm here today to let him know that this is his child and I would appreciate if he step up and take care of him. So wait a minute, let, take me back to the nature of this relationship. Now you say it's friends with benefits. And do you agree, is that what it was? That's what it's always so, been, Your Honor. It's always been that? Always for how been. many years? Seven years, Your Honor. Seven years. Seven years. Of no commitment. No commitment. Just being friends. Just being friends and having sex. And having sex. Unprotected sex. Unprotected sex. No, Your Honor, that's, that's not true. What's the truth then, according to you? At the times we would have sex, she was actually bringing the condoms to me. So you were that... using protection? No, ma'am, that is not true. We did not start using protection until after I was pregnant. I have to ask you this, Ms. Cochran. Why were you having unprotected sex with Mr. Birch when you knew this was just a friends with benefits Because in the thing? beginning of the friendship, uh, it started out as friends with benefits and as the years progressed, the friendship turned more into a relationship for the both of us, at one point, Your we Honor, were supposed to never, relocate never to no another city and we were going to be in a relationship. There was never I was uprooting my children. He was going to uproot his children for us to move to a different city for she him to become... She asked me to be in a relationship and I told her I wasn't ready. Your so Honor. you didn't have a plan to relocate together and be in a relationship. No, Your Did Honor. you have another girlfriend or someone else you were dating during all this time? Your Honor, he had five other women <laughs> at this time that I'm, I know of. And in the beginning of the relationship, like I said, we were together every day, except for Saturday, when he had me under the impression he was going back to his hometown to spend the night with his mother. Five other women. And five other that was, women that's that only, she, lived she only with thought, him. She only thought that, that, lived that I had with him, women. Your Honor, five women that lived with him. That lived with him, lived Your with Honor. Him. There no, was multiple women true. outside of the five that, that I wasn't not, aware of. Until wait true. a minute, How, are you living at... He was living with five women at the same time? Or no, you mean during the course of the year? The course of the year. I was about yes, to man. say. <laughs> no. So I if he's living with other women, how do you think that you're going to be in a relationship with him? Because it didn't start out like that, Your Honor. The women came after he relocated back to his hometown is when I got knowledge of the other women. Your Honor, actually, what she would do is ride past my house every time. Not and, once he and relocated she would to see a city. car. She would see a car sitting in front of my house and she would assume, oh, she lived with you. That's or, not true, or, or, or she would assume that a car was for someone that, that, that lives there or someone that was there. And, and it could be from somebody from down the street. Your Honor, me and this man have been in a friendship for many years. We've been through many different locations together. I pretty much know what cars belong and which cars don't. Yes, I did ride by his house initially in the beginning because I All didn't know time, what he was doing. Then All when the Mr. Time. Birch told me, Every don't ride by minutes. my house no more, I told him to quit having other women over there or just tell me about them. He had me under the impression that as long as I was loving him and giving him sex the way that he wanted, I had nothing to worry about. And I believed it. I'm a woman. I get it. Sometimes you just love mm -hmm. someone. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't turn out the way you want. Mm -hmm. And I can see the tears in your eyes right now when you can barely even look at him because you still love him now. He's my friend. He's my friend, and uh, after today, either we're gonna get stronger or we're gonna remain what we've been. 
That's just how I see it. I've, Mr. Birch is the first man I ever loved. Hopefully he's not the last. He was my first man that I ever loved. I felt like because he was a little older that he was a little bit more mature, but I come to find out over the years that older men are just as sneaky <laughs> as younger men. But I never snuck anything towards her. I, I was honest with her the whole time. Honesty is not in his policy, Your Honor. He was never honest. He was honest that he honest didn't want to have a relationship. One. He was honest about not ha wanting to have a relationship. He was honest about not wanting to have any more children. But he was dishonest about a lot of things, Your Honor. He told you, we have this friendship, but I'm not really ready for a relationship, but we have a friendship with benefits. And you felt like if you're going to get involved with somebody and be with somebody else, then at least let me know because you know I'm here and I am thinking that you're going to get in position to be in a relationship one day, and when you do that, it would be with me. And that's what the assumption was, Your Honor. Ah, uh, okay. Because I'm not understanding why you have yourself so far out there for a man that keeps telling you he doesn't want to be in a relationship with you, and he's constantly with other women. So, when you would see these other women, you would be she's offended. Never I didn't seen, see, she's never I seen didn't no other see women. She, any she other women until the after car. a year. No, until after assume. a year later. Okay. When I was riding up the street and he was coming out with another lady and his family members informed me that that was his girlfriend. Got it. And I asked him who she was. He said it was his high school sweetheart that he had rekindled things with. I asked him then, how can you be in a relationship with her when I just asked you four months ago to be in a relationship with me? And he said he wasn't ready then, but he was ready now. I was okay with him having a girlfriend because I didn't feel the effects of her. She lived in another city. Him and I lived in the same city, and I was still with him every day but Saturday. And when he left for work, because he's on the road... I don't understand that every day but Saturday. Every day but Saturday, I don't Your get Honor. it. We weren't together on Tuesdays or Thursdays or Sunday nights. That's not either. True, but Honor. you still were carrying on a sexual relationship with her when you had this girlfriend in the other city. Don't lie. That would be a yes. Were you just playing this girl, Mr. No, Curry? I was not. Did you know how much she cared about you? Yes, I, I didn't know that. To me, but she's made it so you. obvious. No, she's made it so obvious. Though, look, I always say, when you know a woman loves you, if you don't want to be bothered with that woman, then why are you coming over and having sex with her more than one time in a week? You know that only fuels the love she has for you and, and makes her think there's a possibility. I never made a thing was a possibility. That's not true, I was Your honest Honor. with her the whole time. That's not true, Your Honor. So you're saying she was already pregnant when she told you? Yes. That's not true, Your Honor. Mr. Birch is delusional <laughs> and he's not telling the truth. I went to Tennessee the morning I left for Tennessee. She said, I had sex with you and I had sex with, with him the, 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 night, the night after. And I'm like, huh? I, I was, like, shocked. Like, really? Did you tell him you had sex with somebody else as well, Ms. Cochran? I sure enough did, Your You Honor. did. I sure enough did. After the baby was born, she completely just, just forgot about him. Oh, you're the dad. Your and Honor. I'm like, I'm, what, what about him? You told me about him. And you admit to that? Yes, Your Honor. So why are you just bringing him to court to prove that he's the father? Because, Your Honor, if I may submit to yes. the court Ron, the calendar... Yes, Ron, please get her evidence. Thank you. Uh, so you're submitting a calendar to the court. What does this calendar outline? Uh, on the 5th of October, Your Honor, that was my girlfriend's birthday from California, and Mr. Birch had texted me wanting to see me, and I was on the other line with her, and I said, my old man's texting me, I'm about to go see him. And she said, don't give in to him, you're being a mashed potato. So because I did go there and I had sex with Mr. Birch that night, I wrote on the calendar so that way my best friend and my mother would not know that I had went back to Mr. Birch and had sex with him again, so I wrote mashed potato. You know what? I don't know why she didn't write brought Magnum condoms with me. Because we didn't use no condoms, Your Honor. She brought, she brought condoms that whole, that whole month. The following week on the 12th, Your Honor, I was with him that Friday night up until that Saturday morning when he left. I was supposed to go with him on vacation. Huh? Two, three days before it was time to go. Where would I have been? He informed me that I wasn't able to go because there, not, there wasn't no room in the cabin. I fell for it and believed I, it. I never told him. And, and he went on. During the time that he was gone, a family member sent me pictures and videos of a bear being on their porch 
And in the silhouette, I seen a female that I've known Mr. Birch to be encountering, and I decided then that he wasn't alone and I wasn't gonna be either. And that's when I decided to have sex with another man. So you know that you had sex with the other man when? On the 13th. So you're admitting that you had sex with Mr. Birch on the 12th, the other man on the 13th? Yes, ma'am, the 12th. After I had a more inclusive ultrasound, they pinpointed my conception date and they believed that I conceived between October 2nd and October 8th. I was with Mr. So they Birch. gave you a window of conception? Yes, ma'am. Okay, got you. So I'd like to hear from your witness, ma'am. Step to the podium and state your name for the court. Andrea Brandon. Hello, Ms. Brandon. What would you like to add? What do you know about this situation? I, I know Tian. He's... I'm not gonna sit here and badmouth him. He's just not a good friend. He has played on her emotions since day one. He knew what he was doing. He has four other kids that he takes care of, okay? So it's not that he can't be a good father, but he's not a good friend. I'm a very good friend. No, you're not. That's one thing He had this say. woman thinking that she was... He uprooted her kids, had her thinking that they were gonna be together. Had I her, don't know where she got Had they from. was going to move together. I done been to the house to where y'all went together that y'all was going to move in together, Tian. I don't know where she got... Where she get that from. We went house-seeing together. You got off of work. She had your kids. Your house kids fooled with her. Even when y'all don't get along. Yeah, He's lying. You went to go see no house together? They was with you every day. Every day. I'm not lying. Every day. So, Miss Brandon, what do you know about the paternity? Well, I was there when... Whenever she conceived... Well, I'm not gonna say I was there, <laughs> but I was watching her kids. I was staying with her. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Thank Brandon, you. for your testimony. Thank you may you. be seated. Take me to the birth. Was Mr. Birch present? No, ma'am. Um, well, where was he? He's such a great friend. Where was he? He was, uh, he said he wasn't taking the day off, so it was just me and my mother in the delivery room. I called Mr. Birch, let him know the baby was here. He said, okay, he hung up, that was it. Did you list a father on the birth certificate? No, ma'am. I have the birth certificate right here, Mass. I'd like to see that. Ron, can you please hand me that? But I did give... And Mr. Birch knew that the baby was there because I called him to ask him how to spell his name. So, so like, your child's like full name is... Say it out loud. You nice to Jean Lewis Crockerin. And I never even heard about him being the Lewis Crockerin. That's, that's something new to me. I told him, but he never believed it. You never knew? I never knew. Never know. He didn't want to know. He didn't want to believe it. He didn't she want to know. told me that. I that, called him, that's asked him for to me. the spelling. He gave me the spelling, and he asked me why. And I said, because I'm putting your name on his birth certificate. He has my, my, uh, my first name, but not my last name, though. That don't make any sense to me. I wanted him to sign his son's birth certificate at his own free will. Look, that is admirable. You Mr. already... Birch admitted to my friend that he knew he was the father once he seen you and I at eight weeks old. He's a handsome young man. But if you, if you look at me, I'm midnight black. She's like 11.50, and he's like 8.59. Yes, ma'am. So, what? So, yep. I, I mean, I'm talking about skin complexion. You feel like the child's skin color doesn't indicate that you doesn't could match. be That's correct. Your Honor, father. skin color may not match, but Mr. Birch had asked if he could claim that skin color on his taxes. Ooh. Oh, that's right. Uh-oh. And she straight told me no. Now, you know mm -hmm. that's ignorant. It's very... You standing over here denying a baby but asked to claim him on your taxes? Yes, I did. Girl, I know you in love with this boy. I know you are, because you can't see nothing. Yeah. That's a lot of nerve. It is. Okay, so let me ask you this. Was that your way of saying that you knew deep down that was your child? If you're gonna claim him on your taxes? No, no. Yes, ma'am. Ron, I'm ready for the results. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Crockerin versus Birch, when it comes to 23-month-old Unai Crockerin, it has been determined by this court. You... are not the father. Ooh. Ooh, Lord. Ms. Crocker? I apologize. And I accept your apology. I know there was a part of you that truly wanted this child to be his because it's just another way to be connected to the man that you love. No, no, ma'am. Ma'am? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I wanted it for the children. I've heard the testimony. 
You heard the phrase, love is blind. Mm -hmm. Baby, you've been blind as a Betsy bug up in here for eight years. You can't see that he's just not gonna be with you. Mr. Poravecchio, you claim that the defendants, Ms. Touche and her daughter, Ms. Lutz, fraudulently received $150,000 in settlement money from the death of your father, Ricky Poravecchio Sr. Because Ms. Lutz is not your biological sister and her mother covered up that fact. Yes, Your Honor. You've petitioned this court for a DNA test and hope to pursue a claim in your home state to have the money returned to your family. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Touche, you are here to put an end to a more than 30-year-old feud between your family and the poor Vecchios, which started with rumors and lies about your daughter's paternity. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Poor Vecchio, how have you and your family been defrauded by the defendants? My father was on a tugboat um, working, and he drowned, and um, accidental debt is what it's said on his debt certificate. That's what it was declared. That's what it was. It's declared as accidental debt, drowned. So let me understand. Your father at the time was married to? My mom. Me. Ms. Touche. Touche. I feel the settlement was awarded to Ms. Touche. Mrs. Lutz uh, had a maiden name, um, her mother's Touche as a maiden name of Theo. Um, I have evidence right here on a birth certificate. Jerome, let me see the evidence. Mm -hmm. And you submitted this birth certificate because you said originally she was named? Theo. Ms. Lutz was named Theo. Mm -hmm. And then later yeah. on, her yeah. last name was changed to Provecchio. Yes. So after your father passed away, you felt like she in some way affected the settlement distribution? Correct, Tell Your me. Honor. A week after my, my dad was declared deceased, Ms. Lutz was named, changed from Theo to Provecchio. My Provecchio. mom had to change my name because I was born a Theo because she was out of wedlock. My dad and her were poor. They didn't have the money oh, to be married. Sure. They were I poor. Disagree. And after he died, they were already going to get my name changed. And after they di he I died, disagree. she had to have it changed mm -hmm. so that I can get the Social Security benefits that I deserve, just like Ricky did and just Why like my did other brother did. So long? And also, <laughs> Your Honor, it was with Ricky and I's full intention on changing my daughter's name as soon as we could come up with the money to do so. And also, when she was born, we were going to put Ricky Provecchio's name on there and have her last name, but we were told by the hospital that legally we could not do that because we were not married. It was I a have four time. children that's out of that, It was wedlock. a totally different time this when I was born. It was in 1982. It's not the 1700s, Ricky. Lori. It was in 83. You do not know what the laws and you regulations were, were at that time. Apparently, you don't either. Excuse it, me? I was there. Matter. You were not. Okay. So my mom and my dad were separated, right, when he died. And um, just living apart, there was no right. legality they to it at divorced, all. They were not divorced, and my dad never said I was not a so, okay, Mr. Porvecchio, you brought a couple of witnesses. I want to get to the first witness. Ms. Cortez, am I correct? Yes, Please stand at the podium. You are actually Mr. Porvecchio Sr.'s sister. Correct. And so you are Mr. Porvecchio standing here, his yeah. aunt. Yes. Yes, she never desired, okay. denied me either. This is the first time hearing about this a few weeks ago because I have never heard that I was not a poor Vecchio until I've I got never, into it on Facebook. I've she never... actually met my mom at Mardi Gras and begged her to let us in, let us back in her life, which she did. Yes, I did. And then when we were at a restaurant celebrating my brother's birthday after being in contact for a year, she walks right past us at the restaurant on my brother's birthday like she didn't know us with her parents. Do you remember that? Yes. Oh, she Lord, walked she right past us. My, she said on a social media site that she did not remember that, and I remember mm. it very clearly. She made my brother, my deceased brother, it's cry, true. and then she wants to post things on 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 social media with my brother's picture, my deceased brother's picture, which she wasn't even in his life. Ms. Lutz, that's not why? True. Yes, it Ms. Lutz, not I true. need to understand from you specifically. Why do you think your brother? is denying that you're... Because they filled his head with all kind of lies. You know my mother more than anything in this world. She kept us together, Ricky. Well, you know it's a, fa it's a family feud. 
Okay. It's a family feud. It was it's not things, between me and you, Ricky. That was created by y'all. She there's, treated you like a son. There's They've things always had a family that were feud. said in the family on my side, my okay. father's side, and also on your side. Why Why what did we say? Quicker? I never said anything bad to you never. about the Provecchios because you were a child and there was no place in that for children. We that was an adult out of it. situation. She kept us in contact after my daddy died. She didn't have to go so, get you from Ms. my Lutz, home and spend, let us spend Ms. with Lutz, you together. Ms. Lutz, direct your comments to the court. I want to understand this. Why do you think this is happening? I have no clue. I loved Ricky with all my heart, and the fact that he would even question me and him being brother and sister kills me because I look just like my daddy. If anybody so looks like my daddy, you. I look just like my daddy. I have a lot of anger for the Provecchios, my daddy's side of the family, because when he, my daddy passed away, they passed away. They basically were out of my life for good by their own choice. So let me understand. And that killed uh, me. Up until a certain part of your life, you were included in the family. Up until my daddy Accepted. died. Accepted. Yes, ma'am. As ma a provecchia. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. H until how old? They, until my daddy passed away at five. They were fine with us being a provecchio. They didn't say anything before, but after my mom received money, they wanted to say, oh, we're not their grandchildren anymore. We're not his child. Not true. Yes, it is. The reason, uh, as far as them separating, my brother and Laura, is that my brother walked in on her having an affair. Oh, my God. You How would you sick. know something like that? Your Honor, I'd like it to explain told, that lie. It was told okay? by my brother. I was That's, 21 years old. Dawn, you, you just need to stop lying and be done with that. Your Honor, this is exactly what happened, okay? Like when Ricky and I first met, I was uh, somewhere around 16 years old. I mean, we just clicked immediately. He's a handsome, good-looking Italian man. I just couldn't help myself. I fell in love with him. After a couple of days, we started seeing each other for a while, and it was just him and I, just us together. Things were great. I got pregnant. I was almost 18 years old. I got pregnant. Things started going a little downhill from there because he started showing signs of jealousy and issues going on. We got past that. My daughter was born. The next year, we got married. Then the next year, my son was born. So we were doing OK. And we you were, were still together. Issues. We right. were still together. You were a family. We right. were a family. They had a second yes, child, yes. We had a second child. And at that time, the Provecchios were acknowledging you. Absolutely. You Not were a part doubt of their, their family. Mind. Absolutely. I'm just trying to understand the fraud. There where was, where does doubt, the fraud come in, Mr. Corvecchio? Was it his? It was, it was his parents that doubted us. Let, let him explain this, because I want to understand. There was doubt from my father, thinking that Toreen was actually for him. But he did love Laurie, touche. He did love her. Yes, he of did. course he did. He married her and had two children with her. And so you're saying that there was always rumors or discussion in the family my father that your father so doubted whether or not Ms. Lutz was truly his child. The rumors right. came from the Provecchio family, and the only reason there's any question about any money is because they thought they can get their greedy little hands on the it after reason, my daddy you know, passed. Anything there about nothing. anything oh, is Oh, really? Because... All right. Listen, I understand that you are upset and very passionate about this situation, <laughs> but you're all over the place. I need to understand the doubt. As Did you hear about anyone those... else she potentially was sleeping with? No, Your Honor. The only thing I've heard was and it's... my father walking in on Miss Touche. As far as with that, apparently, uh, that's, that's such a lie. With a coworker? There was a point that you were told that your father walked in on Miss Touche and another man. Right. Correct, Your Honor. Your Honor, that's a lie. That's not the reason my husband, husband and I separated. And the, initially, I got a job right as, as I finished school. I went to work. I was driving a really old, broken-down car. My husband was home watching the children. I was driving the car. The brakes went out on my car. As I'm waiting, someone, one of the me mechanics came out of the back, who was a friend of my older brother, and saw me sitting there. He went to the auto parts store, bought brakes for my car, replaced them on my car. When I got home is when I found out my husband was so upset that I had been gone for so long. Is and I, as I So what you're saying, Ms. Touche, is that's the only incident where you felt like your fidelity was in question. Yeah, my he dad was, had jealousy. He was a jealous person. He accused me. That was the second so time he accused me So this gentleman that they're talking about, 
the co-worker. Mm -hmm. The one you brought to did, my father's was, funeral? Did you right, was a she friend did of the family. Were you ever what? in a relationship nah, like with you. this Not man? My eyes. After my husband passed away, yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. You did bring him to your husband's funeral? As, he was a friend of the family, yes, yeah, ma'am. He, he went. So? And yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, and she was caught. So what? So wait a minute, Miss Cortez, you're saying that this is the man she was caught with. Yes. And then so during your said. brother's funeral, this man was there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor. And then later they had a relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. As yeah, there was, you, yeah. I lost there was contact several people for a there. while. Yeah, she lost contact because she her parents wouldn't allow her to exactly. have contact with her own family. So I, I want to go to you, Ms. Lutz. Um, tell me a little bit about your relationship with your father. You remember having a relationship with him? There's not a lot that I remember because I was so young, but I do remember my dad had this really big car and he would let us ride on his lap, drive us around. I was daddy's girl. I was his only daughter. He had two sons. And he loved his kids. He like loved you his care. He loved, he his loved his children. Yes, he did. I loved his, his, his daughter. Kids. And I grew up without a dad, and that was hard enough. And then when I grew up without his, his memories, his childhood, I didn't have that because they took that from me. They took that and all of his belongings. Your mother took that And from didn't you. give them back to me, didn't let me have anything from my dad. And now they're taking my brother from me just because they have so much hatred in their heart. And you two were close. We were always close. My mother would make sure we stayed and kind of take weeks with him like that, like she had visitation with him, like it was her child. We never fought. This is the first time we've ever had a disagreement, and I'm 32. I didn't know he even thought this kind of thing. I didn't know because he didn't tell me. So you were never aware that there was a question related to your paternity? No. Until when? Until about a month ago. That's the first time that I ever heard anything that I might not be a Provecchio. And so you're saying, Mr. Provecchio, that the family just held this in? The All family this... held it in, and it's... It's hearsay, it's things that I've heard on my side of my father's family. That's not So true. how yes. much money did Ms. Touche receive? Do you remember Ms. Touche? Yes, ma'am. I have a copy of the settlement check here. It was for $325,000, but as you can see, it was separated $100,000 for each of the children, including Mr. Provecchio, mm -hmm. and $25,000 for me as his legal wife. Jerome, let me see that. My mom always, I my, never wanted for anything. My mother bought a home. Or it was under my name. My grandfather's the one who took the money and put it oh, in an account. Oh, I didn't even know that. That's nice. He took it in an account and put it in there until I was 18 of age. Of age. And when he turned 18, money, he bought a Mustang. And he wrecked it and almost killed himself with it. My mother cared for me and my younger brother with that money. And I don't have any regret on how she decided how many houses to spend you all lived it. In? One, one house. One she house. bought one house for so, us. Mr. Provecchio, it is your intention that you want to return to your home state and yeah, okay. file a claim to have that money returned to you. You believe. Well, if she comes out, she's not my biological sister, I will pursue that. Oh, wow. I mean, this is 30 years going on. And 30 it, years. And this is all new to me. That's what I love. So... This could have been done with 30 years ago. So, for 30 years, this family has been in There turmoil. was a reason. We always... We always... Why are you here? Why you are don't you... even want me. Why hold do you on, keep hold on, head out? hold on. Sorry, Your Honor. For 30 years, this family has been in turmoil. Yes, ma'am. Over rumors and, ultimately, a settlement, which is far too common. Money. That and at the end of the day, it comes you know, down to that. That is nowhere near the cost of what it takes to raise two small children. I know I'm raising four kids. Yeah, I think the only way Dave, we are Dave going to be able to figure out how <laughs> and if we can move forward so is I'm to a, have a, the results. Like yours, Lori? Jerome? I don't want... You should be want. sorry. I don't want... I don't want a relationship hey, anymore. I'm good. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. Just so we are clear, in order to determine if Ms. Lutz and Ricky Porvecchio Jr. are siblings, we performed a siblingship DNA test. Using Mr. Porvecchio Jr. and his mother, Ms. Bruce's DNA, as well as Ms. Lutz and her mother, Ms. Touche's DNA. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Yes, right. Your Honor. The results read as follows. In the case of Porvecchio versus Touche Lutz, pertaining to 32-year-old Toreen Lutz, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Porvecchio and Ms. 
Lutz. Our sibling. Thank I you. Told keep you. up the lies, Ricky. I told keep you. Keep up. You ruined our relationship no, you're with done. their lies. You're done, Ricky. Come you thank you very much, Dawn. You the one that wanted this. No, I wanted you it to show it you. I you wanted to show it you we and never had this problem exactly until they got in the middle of us. Let's get some order. Listen, listen, I just listen. wanted to know the truth. So your yeah. sister's nothing. She I'm never nothing. was I nothing. Matter, right? Weekend. And you killed our relationship. Family, you know how I feel about this. family, family. I was hoping the truth would be the catalyst to more positive discourse. That is your sister. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Biologically. No, no, no don't stay on your side. Hold on, no, he came no, to ma'am. give a hug. No, ma'am. I can't even do this, Ricky. You want no, to No, goodbye. Do this. Well, listen. He came over to try to give a hug. Mm -hmm. If you're not ready to receive that, take a moment. I've dealt with a lot of And hopefully grief. one day, because I'll say this, what is the sense of fighting, yelling, screaming, and fighting for validation to say, I know I'm a part of this family, I'm a part of this family, and then you find out, yes, you are a part of the family, I knew it. but I don't want nothing to do with the family. I, I... We didn't want it to begin with, There's a Your reason Honor. even being here. What you stated today has been validated by the DNA. And what I'm hoping for you is that you will use that truth and say you don't have to harbor another hurt feeling. Everything you stood in court today and said was true. That is his child. Mr. Evans, you claim your relationship with the defendant was just a week-long fling, and you are certain you are not the biological father of her two-month-old daughter, Lainey. Once today's results prove what you already know, you want your last name back. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Ms. Snyder, you claim today's DNA test will prove that the plaintiff is Lainey's father, and you need him to step up and help support your daughter. Is that yes, correct? Your Honor. So, Mr. Evans, you say you're certain this is not your child. I'm absolutely certain. Explain. So, the baby doesn't look like me for, from the get-go. Like, as soon as I saw her, I was just like, she don't look like me. She's, she doesn't have my nose, she doesn't have my eyes. Like, I would see, you know, features, you know, that would re resemble me, and she doesn't look anything like me. So, I, I, I just wanna know. I mean, if she is mine, then okay. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll man up and take care of my, take care of my little girl. And, um, but if she's not mine, then I want my name back. So, Miss Snyder, I see you are so emotional. Yes, Your Honor, because I just want to want to prove that he's the father and how much I love her and all that. <laughs> and when you think about a man denying your baby and saying, she's not mine. It just makes me mad. <laughs> I can see you just can't take your eyes off of her. What are you feeling in this moment right now? Emotional and kind of sad. Why? Because it's just overwhelming right now. So today truly means everything to you. This is important. Yes, Your Honor. This is the day that you feel like you're going to get a father for your baby. Yes, Your Honor. The father she deserves. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Evans, please take me to the day you met Miss Snyder. How did you meet? So, I was downtown playing drums. And, um, and so she walks up to me and I see her and she's, you know, looking at me and I'm just like, okay. And she's like, you know, starts giving me those eyes and I'm like, okay, I know that look. And then she starts, you know, dancing a little bit and then starts flashing her boobs. And no, I'm I like, did Wait, what? Yes, she did. <laughs> That's a lie. Yes, you did. Okay, so you're playing drums. Yeah. She comes up, you all make eye contact. Yes. And she flashes you. She flashes me. No. And then she, like, starts getting closer. <laughs> yes, she did. And um, she starts dancing on top of me. Like, she's no. literally in my lap while I'm playing drums. No. Dancing and everything. Don't no. deny it. You can't deny that. Yes, I can. Like, I mean, okay, deny it all you want, but that's what happened. <laughs> And while she's dancing nope. on top of me while I'm playing drums, you know, people are like coming by like, oh, you know, like, you know, cause nope. I'm, you know, it's Lie. entertaining and whatnot. And I'm thinking like, this is great. She's making me more money. Put more, cause people <laughs> put more money in my bucket. No. Nope. And you, you know, said, this Lie. is great. The show just got better. <laughs> okay. It's so so though. they know, put more money in. Everybody's entertained. She's yeah. dancing on your lap and you playing the drum. Yeah. <laughs> then what? So then I get a phone call from my ex saying that she's at my house right now. Who she, brought, bring, she brought a guy over 
because he lost his job, he needed a place to stay, and it was the only place that she can think of to bring him. And I'm just like, okay, you know what, fine. But just know that I'm like, at this, at this point in time, there's this girl dancing on my lap right now, and I'm bringing her home. You didn't home, say that so. part. <laughs> oh my God. You didn't say that part. I did too say that part. You just said. I told you, that, I told you what you happened said. right after that, right after I got off the phone. So now listen, so you, you, you end up going home together. Yes. What happens? So I walk in and she's on my couch, she's in my chair, they're uh, talking and whatnot, giggling and laughing and everything. So we go to the bed and her and I are you know, in, my, in my room and Ms. Snyder comes in the, in the room and um, you know, she gets in the bed with us. Well, I'm talking to my ex at this point, why aren't you out there with him because you brought him here? She's like, well, I'm, sleep I'm not sleeping out there with him, I'm sleeping here with you and her. And I was just like, all right, okay, well... Wait, I... so you go from playing the drums to being in the bed with Miss Snyder and your ex? Yeah. I'm scared to ask, Jerome. <laughs> so what but I... what happened? So, I think you know what happened, Your Honor. Um, she started, you know, messing with me, and then, um, and then my ex noticed, and she was like, oh, no, that's mine, and I'm just like... Huh? She grabs it from... She grabs it from Amanda, yeah. She goes, <laughs> I said, what, what? No. <laughs> oh, it's as... a threesome and a game of tug of war at the same time? <laughs> no. So after about a minute or so, I'm just like, hey, 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 y'all quit fighting. There's enough for me for both of y'all. And I'm just like... It's enough for both of y'all? Yes. <laughs> oh, no. There's enough for me for both of y'all. And I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking in the back of my head, like, this is amazing, I can't... You know, I'm, I just, you know, I'm, I'm excited, you know, so I'm just like, I want to get control of the situation. Okay. And so, um, so I'm talking to my ex, I'm like, you've had me long enough, you need to learn how to share. And, <laughs> and I told Amanda... Oh, like, you start I, getting the lingo together. I, I suppose. I mean, it just kind of came in the, in the moment. You oh, know? okay, it's, so... It's, okay, and so then I, what happened? I was like, Amanda, do you know how to share? And she goes, yes, I know how to share. And I go, all right, well then, y'all get along, be nice, play fair, let's have a good time. Yeah. No. And so, you know, we started having sex and, you know, and it was, it felt great. I loved it. I had, I had a great time. And... But you didn't use protection. No. Which I, is why you're here. Yes. That's why. But it gets better. It gets better. There's more, there's more to the story. So, um, Amanda, she was with me for that whole week that we were together. And, um, So you had sex for a week, Miss Snyder, with Mr. Evans? A couple you times were... during the week, yes, ma'am. And you were there all week? Yes, Your Honor. And so, therefore, that's why you're saying hey. he's Laney's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. I can't move on from this point until I say, now you know you don't have no business playing drums out there on the street, then coming back home with some woman well... and not using protection, and you don't have no business coming home with him and not using no protection. Yes, sir. I understand that now. <laughs> Was that the only time you were intimate, Mr. Evans? No. So I left for a week. I went to Colorado to go get a job, and I came back a week later. And um, we had, and before I left, we had met up one last time, and and we had sex that night as well. In and the I car. didn't use protection. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. We're here now. We're here. So, Mr. Evans, take me to the day you find out Miss Snyder is pregnant. Okay, so I'm in Colorado at this point working, and um, she calls me, like, between... It was, like, in between July and August of 2018, and um, I get a phone call from her, and she told me that she was pregnant. And I was like, okay, so, you know, when do you find out when the baby's born and, you know, what's the sex and everything? And so she told me it, it's possibly a girl and she's due sometime in January. So December you know, or December, one or the other. And so, so you just said, okay, well, just, yeah, I was just like, okay, well, I'm pretty sure at that point I thought it was my baby and I'm just like, all right, you know, so, you know, just, I'm thinking it's mine. Cause I didn't know that she was, you know, may have been with somebody else or anything like that. I'm thinking that time that we were together was the only, I was the only person that she was with and, you know, conceived during that time. And so I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, it's fine. You know, if, if everything goes as planned, you know, I'll be there, when, you know, when the baby's born and everything like that. Um, but work kept me held up. So I didn't get back until sometime in January. 
after the baby was born. And, um, and then when, she, when I saw the baby, I was just like, mm, are, you sure that's, are you sure she's mine? Because she don't look like me. She don't have my features. She doesn't, you know, like she, her nose is like more flared and mine is like more round and like she doesn't really like have my eyebrows like and I have like a widow's peak that you can't really see. It's kind of faded, but like, like, you know, I just got a haircut. So during the <laughs> pregnancy, you accepted that this is my child. You yeah. knew you had had sex without protection. Correct. You did the math. You said to yourself, yeah, it was probably around that time. I own up to my mistakes and this is my baby. All right. Yeah. Did you ask Miss Snyder if she'd been with anyone else or could it be anyone else's baby? Did you ask? After the fact, yes. After I saw her, I did. What did she tell you when you asked her? She said that she was sleep that she had slept with someone else. Oh, so Miss Snyder? Who's this other person you slept with? I do admit I slept with someone else, but we also used protection, and it was after what would have been after the conception date, though. It was like a week or two afterwards. And All right. And so how did you meet this guy that you slept with? I had been knowing him for a little bit. Okay. So but you... we did use protection. Okay. So, well, this court did track down that other man because we wanted to hear his side of the story. And he sent in the following statement. I admit sleeping with Amanda, but I did use a condom. The condom did not break, so I know that baby is not mine. So this statement, it basically is in line with your testimony, that you did have sex, but you did use protection. You don't think he's the father. He doesn't think he's the father. Yes, you You are. also testified about your conception window, and that's a calculation that you did to show that Mr. Evans is the biological father in your mind. Yes, Your Honor. And you did that... You brought a calendar. Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to look at your calendar. So... The beginning of April, that's when you met. And you had sex all week, from the 1st through the 7th. Yeah, it's like the end of March, beginning of April. Okay. And then you had sex one other time on April 15th. And that's what Mr. Evans testified to before he went off to work. Then, baby Lainey was born December 27th. Yeah, she was due the 31st, but I had got induced on the 26th. Okay, so you had sex with the other guy at the end of April the 22nd through the 28th. And if you do the calculation, the window of conception would have been around the end of March to the first week of April. So that leads you to believe that Mr. Evans is Laney's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Evans is the only man you were sleeping with during that time? Yes, Your Honor. Because you didn't meet him until the 1st. Yes, Your Honor. Did you sleep with anybody else on the 31st? No, Your Honor. No. The end of March? No, I, I met him, like, the end of... I met him the end of March, beginning of April. Okay. So, Mr. Evans, now that you see this calendar, are you pretty convinced now? Has it changed your testimony? Do you believe you are Laney's biological father? No, he's not mine. I'm not the father. I do, I do not believe that I am the father. But are you basing all of this just on looks because you don't think she looks like you? Because you know we can't base everything on looks. A baby's face forms and develops over time. She may not seem to have your features now, but maybe she will later. I mean, well, that's, that's, why, that's what I need. I need proof. I need proof of that. So, I mean, and if she... So what kind of relationship have you developed with Lainey thus far? I have not seen a Lainey since I've been back from, from work. So you've never met her? Never. Never all. laid eyes Only on her? Only pictures and Only video pictures. chat. But you do video chat with her? <clears throat> yeah. And you get the pictures? Yes. And when you get the pictures, what, it just keeps reinforcing this isn't my child? Why are you even staying in touch then? Well, I wanted to get a, a DNA test to find out if she was because she did say that she was slept with this other man. And so, Ms. Snyder, you gave Laney Mr. Evans' last name. Yes, Your Honor. But he wasn't there for the birth or anything. No. And did Your you Honor. talk about that before, Hand? We that... had talked about it and he was planning on coming down there, but at the last minute he wasn't able to because of work. 
But you... Did you decide that on your own to give the baby his last name? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And you say if Laney's not your biological child, you want your last name back. You don't want the baby to have your last name. That's correct. And if she is yours, you have testified that you will step up and you will take care of her. Yes, ma'am. All right. Let's get the results. Jerome? <laughs> May I have the envelope? <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Evans versus Snyder, when it comes to two-month-old Laney Evans, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Evans, you are not the father. You were right, Mr. Evans. You are not her biological father. Ms. Snyder, I'm sorry. I know that wasn't the result you thought you were going to get today. Have you informed this other man that he could potentially be the biological father? I told him. Maybe. You told him? I said, there, I, said I, I gave him a chance. I said, you might be, even though we use the condom, I said, there might still be a sl small chance. <laughs> Is there anybody else besides this man? No, Your Honor. Okay, so I gotta say this before we go. I know young people are into this one-night stand thing where it's all so fun and you go to the bar or you're drumming on the side of the road and he's looking <laughs> handsome and then you start dancing and then, you know, but there are real-life consequences to this kind of behavior. Real life. You have a beautiful little girl now, and you have to set an example. 